Hey guys, welcome back to the Linux course and the fourth module. So in this session, we'll be learning user input that is taking input from a user for a shell script. So let's get started with it. So first use read command to store the user input in a variable. So read again is a command which you can use to store a particular value. So let's say right now we tried var1 uh, var1 is equal to local variable. So var1 had the value local variable stored inside it. So again what you can do is now you can just type in read and type in a variable name. So once you type in read the shell will wait for a user input. So after that, once it's waiting for the user input, you can type in the user input and it will be stored within that variable name. So once it is stored, then you can use that variable name and you can just do an echo of it and it will contain that particular data. So that's what you can see here. Now taking user input and writing a script to take user input. So you can see here echo enter your name, read name one, welcome to IntelliPad, dollar name one. So this is how the script will look. And first they are creating a script, giving it execution permissions and then they're running the script. It's asking for your name, uh, entering the name. So welcome to IntelliPath Linus 1. So this is how it executes. And now let's get started with this. Uh, we'll get started with the user input. Now opening. So first let's try with this var1 hello world. Now if I do an echo of this, this should have hello world inside it. Yes, because the read command basically stored the value hello world inside the variable var1. Now let's create a shell script. Let's call it user input dot sh, sorry, rm user input. Okay, it's not created. So again, nano user input dot sh and I'm going to type in first the shebang header. Then I'm going to type in echo that is please enter your name and then i'm going to read name and then echo welcome mr dollar name so let's save this and try executing it first i should provide execution permissions so i've given it now let me run please enter your name Welcome Mr. Intel. So this is a little gender based because I'm saying Mr. So no female can type here. So let's make it a little uh, neutral. So I'll make it welcome human. I think now it is better. So yeah, so this is what it does. So now let's do one more thing. We'll do an addition, a simple addition calculator using a shell script. So nano, I'm just opening a new file, add.sh. And then first I'll be again providing my shebang header. So once I've provided that, I'm going to enter enter two numbers with a space. Enter two numbers. I'm just typing enter two numbers, then read num one, read num two, and then echo dollar. I think you remember this. So this is how you can add a number num two. So now let's see. First I'll have to provide execution permissions and i think i can run it right now add.sh so it added so the problem here would be so two so this would be the problem because you are entering two numbers only if you hit an enter then enter the next number it will work otherwise it won't work that is the problem here so this is how shell scripting works so you can make uh this is how this also works or you can just put i think you can put a comma here I'm saving this. Let's run it once again. Sorry, I think it's. Uh, I'll have to make another change. So two and four. So again, it's not a valid identifier. So let's just leave that part. So that we'll see later. So right now, I just wanted to show you. You can add numbers using shell scripting as well. So echo enter two numbers. Read num one. Read num two. Echo num one plus num two inside two parentheses where it has a dollar in the front. So basically, this will add the number. So we've seen how to use uh, read to get in user input. So this is how you can do it. So again, you can use this for various uh, different tasks. You can basically create a complete form to get in details of uh, a user and yeah, it's like programming only but it's uh, simpler than that um, yeah so you can get in values of a particular user and um, you can automate that process so you can do all of these using the user input command so now let me go back and recap this module once again so first we started off with shell 
and then shell scripts shell is the interface between the user and the kernel where you can run shell scripts or you can run in commands shell script is a co combination of multiple commands which you can run to shorten a particular process and then there are different types of shells we saw what bone c corn and bone again shell bone again shell is what which is uh, which is running in our particular centos 8 operating system so that's bone again shell or bash and these this is how it looks the shell uh, prompt looks so the def in default we have dollar in bash and bone shell even in corn shell it is a dollar in c shell it is percentage and as a default prompt uh, in root user you have hash every single uh, every single shell has hashtag has its uh, default prompt command sorry the default prompt symbol for a root user and then we saw how to create a shell script, how to type in a shell script, how to add commands and how to add permissions and then how to execute it. So we saw all this and then we saw about environment variables. We saw what is an environment variable, what is local and global, the importance of it, the importance of shell scripting, the various things you can do with shell scripting, as well as uh, how to create a local variable, a global variable, how to check the local variable, whether it is, uh, sorry, the global variable, whether it is available in the shell or not and the next one uh, how to export it like and then also how to unset that particular variable that is removing the variable as a global or a local variable and then finally we saw about user input where we use the command read to take in a user's input and process it so that is where read command comes in so you can see change the permission execute the script this is what we did we created a script added in some commands we changed the permission we ran the script we typed in the input which i was asking once we typed it it started ex uh, after that we executed it and once we executed it'll ask for a prompt so enter your name you type it and the below echo will again work so that's how it happens this is how you take in a user's input so we've completed this particular module fourth module so guys thank you for attending this module meet you in the next module